Hi there, my name is Brian, and this is my quarantine haircut. Today we're going to paint some Yu Jing from Corvus Belli's Infinity sci-fi skirmish game. The Yu Jing are going to end up in the stock scheme, which is a yellow, uh, red, and kind of a greenish, bluish tone. This is going to be a pretty difficult paint scheme. I would say this is probably about an 8 of 10 difficulty, kind of more on the intermediate to advanced level of painting. We're going to tackle stuff like pin washing and very specific, you know, sort of directional shading, edge highlights, uh, blending with an airbrush, and some non-metallic metal. Uh, these are not going to be necessarily display quality miniatures, but they're going to be probably about one step below that as far as a really high tabletop standard that you can be proud of. Let's check it out. And our odyssey begins with a space marine? I had to reshoot this because the original footage did not come out great. So these steps are going to be what I used on the Yujing, but we're going to see them done to a space marine. First step was just priming him black, zenithling him white with my airbrush. After that I gave him a coat of Vallejo rust orange, and came back and zenithled him again with basically just you know where the light would hit with white this is a pretty quick job I'm doing this marine just to give you an idea of how this looks when you're done but it's really up to you how much white to use and how many layers to build you can continue building white then yellow then white then yellow but the idea being is that you zenith all that white in there on the points of light and you spray it with yellow which creates light now we're back to Yujing and <laughs> I promise it'll be Yujing from this point forward we're gonna hit them with a quick coat of gloss varnish. I use uh, what used to be called uh, Future Floor Wax. It's a pledge floor wax that is essentially just a acrylic gloss. Uh, you can use whatever sort of gloss varnish you want, whether it's in a can or an airbrush. This is gonna give them a really nice, slick sheen, you know, sort of feel. And you can see that shininess here. The shininess is not really what we're going for, but what we want this for so our pin wash flows really nicely into the recesses. And you can see this model, I've been doing some of the pin wash already, and we're moving on to this next one here. The idea with the pin wash is that it's a little bit of black and, and brown mixed together with some alcohol, and it gets it a very, uh, uh, it flows very nicely, especially on our, our freshly glossed surface. And you can see I kind of brush it on almost sort of like a wash in some areas where it just kind of let it flow into their cracks. This is going to nicely shade the yellow, and because it's so glossy, if you make a mistake, it's very easy to just wipe it off with your finger, paper towel, a Q-tip, whatever. At this point, I'm just going to kind of walk through and show you the pin wash on all the models that I've hit so far. Uh, her arm fell off. We're going to fix that later, I promise. You can see the shading it's left in there. And it's really just recess shading. We're not creating um, any kind of middle shadows. It's just for recesses. These Infinity models are pretty binary. It's kind of like painting a Space Marine. They have very defined recesses that take this sort of pin wash well, and they also take edge highlighting very well because of that. Now that we've finished the pin wash, we've got to get rid of that glossy sheen. And to get rid of it, we're just spraying them with some matte varnish. I'm using Vallejo uh, resin matte varnish. I, uh, it's, it's actually probably my favorite uh, uh, matte varnish. You just have to be careful with your airbrush. Make sure you clean your airbrush really thoroughly after you use it. I would suggest having a second cheaper airbrush to shoot varnish and primer and things with. Now after that matte varnish dries, we're going to go back and we're going to start our edge highlighting on the yellow. We're going to basically finish the yellow before we move on to anything else. Now the edge highlight is going to be a mix of ice yellow and the original yellow that we used uh, when we airbrushed. Ice yellow is a little too chalky and a little too white to jump straight to, so we mix a little bit of that yellow in to push it a little closer to that real nice warm yellowy orange kind of tone that we're looking for, and we start our edge highlighting process. 
Now you'll notice these highlights still jump out quite a bit and that is intentional and it will make sense as we move forward. Uh, we're trying to create high contrast edge highlighted look like the official models. Edge highlighting can be a little bit of a tricky beast. Sometimes it's hard to know which edges to highlight and sometimes you overdo it and end up sort of highlighting all the edges of every square object like the knee pads and things like that. I tend to, unless I'm trying to do a sort of a, a really chromey reflective surface like a non-metallic metal, I tend to shade, or excuse me, I tend to highlight at the, at the peak points where light would be hitting. Um, so a lot of times it's sort of the top edges and then sometimes down the sides but not typically bottom edges although occasionally I'll just put in just a little touch here and there to make the, the bottom edge show. And on these models it's I would say fairly easy you tend to follow the shade lines you want your highlight edge lines to be next to your shade lines often that creates maximum contrast and gives us that real nice kind of poppy look that the Infinity models have. And as we work on this model, you can see the armor plates are a little different on the torso. And we're just trying to find where light would fit. And, you know, she obviously has a little bit more rounded areas than the male model does. But it's still fairly easy to find the points of light, kind of based on just where the reflected actual real light is hitting the model. And we're going to use that philosophy as we move forward with uh, painting other areas as well, not just the armor.
is one of my favorite models in this starter set. Uh, this ninja is really rad. Um, it has a bow and arrow. That's awesome. <laughs> you don't see that very often. Um, it's a really cool pose, like the sprinting shot kind of pose. Just a really, it just has a, a very statuesque sculpt and just a really a lot of presence. I like it quite a bit. Uh, I decided to go much more, work more yellow in than the standard scheme does on this model. I believe the standard stock scheme does not have a lot of yellow on it, but I wanted to kind of tie the room together with this uh, a group of six models so they really had a nice unified look to them. But I'm still ultimately using less yellow than on the other models on her. Probably gonna really butcher a lot of the names of <laughs> these models. Uh, I believe this is called the Zhu Yang with a multi rifle and it is like a you know a heavy infantry style model. Lots of heavy armor and this guy is gonna have be very yellow. He's gonna have very little of the secondary color. He's mostly gonna be yellow and sort of the black metallics. And we'll, we'll get into that later uh, in probably in the second video how to do those metallics. Uh, but most of you are going to see me rendering a lot of yellow on this dude. He's got the most by far. This is another favorite of mine. This is the Hasin. Hasin? It's H S I E N. Don't know how to pronounce it. The mini is awesome. He's a heavy armor guy with like a cool cyberpunk trench coat and a heavy machine gun, and a power sword. He's ready to go. He's ready to answer anything. Uh, he also has these really cool kind of antenna uh, deals on his back. Those are pretty fun to paint, and they add a little more uh, visual presence to him sort of on his profile. And as I kind of stated earlier, the way these models are sculpted and the way they're cast, the recesses are very sharp and very defined. It's kind of like painting, you know, a Gundam or a Space Marine or something else with kind of segmented armor. Uh, they're really a joy to paint in this style. It's very easy to, to apply those edge highlights and shades. So now we're going to go in and we're going to base coat our sort of secondary color. And the secondary color is going to be kind of a turquoisey bluish green. We're starting here with black mixed with coal black, and coal black is essentially sort of like a phthalo blue type color. If you compare this to just regular black on the model, it's pretty close. It's probably like a 9 out of 10 value, uh, but it's got that nice little bit of a blue-green hue to it. It's really important when you're base coating, uh, especially a model you've done some rendering on, that you kind of use the side of the brush and you make sure that your paint is got a nice flow to it. And some people will add like flow improver to their paint in addition to thinning it with water. Uh, you know, with black, you can, or, or you know, near black like this, you can thin it a lot 
but you gotta stay in control. You can't have it running all over your painted areas. But you can see that it's just flowing off the brush really nicely. And by using the side of the brush a lot, it kind of lets the brush run into those armor plates that are raised that we've already painted yellow without really hopping up onto the edge of them and, and damaging paint you've already put down. Just be vigilant, um, you know, balance speed with, with accuracy here. You don't want to have to repaint a bunch of yellow if you can help it. This is the step where I think probably most of the skill comes into this kind of paint scheme. And I think just in general, I think this is where if you're going to struggle, this might be where you struggle. I struggled a bit with it as well as I worked through this. I reworked a few areas kind of as I go. You're basically going to cover your original coal black and black combo by mixing a little bit of ice yellow into that original blend. So you wanna make sure that you keep enough of that paint around, whether you're using a wet palette or just remix it something close. Add a little ice yellow to it. It's gonna push it more towards greenish. And you're gonna work that in, probably covering about 50 to 70% of the model. And you're gonna leave the darker color in the recesses, in the, in the shaded areas. So once that's done, we're gonna go in and do our final highlight. And we're not building up as high or as sharp as we did on the yellow. We are gonna build in a little bit of white, a little bit of ice yellow into that mix that we've been working on. And now we're gonna apply this to just really the final little glinty areas that would take, uh, you know, where the light would hit. And this particular model, the Cian, I did the most on, so we can kind of, uh, I got the most good footage from him. So you can see how I rendered this guy out, and again, uh, because your mix is still live on your palette, you can go back and fix stuff. Like if you add a little too much of this highlight and it kind of looks too thick, doesn't jive, just visually doesn't look right, you can go back and fix it with your original mix or just remix it a little bit. It's not a big deal. I think people get intimidated by mixing paints. Just dive in and try it. It's really not that difficult and it's easy to keep your paint active with a wet palette or even just remix it yourself. Um, you get to a point where you're, one day suddenly you'll realize that you can just paint match colors by mixing colors from your collection. Uh, and you'll wonder how you got there. And it's really just by diving in and, and playing around with mixing on your palette. I'm really happy so far with the way that this model is coming out. Um, even though there's really only a total of three values in, in the color that we've worked here, um, because of, I've put the light in good spots, it's looking pretty natural. Obviously, it you know visually is very you know striking, and it's it's not like a, a what you call like a heavily blended style. But visually it works, that's very effective, and it matches kind of the aesthetic of the armor as well.
And I'll say this as we work forward here, uh, and we're working basically with the stock color scheme that Corvus Belly came up with, although theirs is a little more green than mine. Um, these colors just naturally really contrast well with each other. They're pretty close to opposites on the color wheel, and they just have a really nice, you know, sort of, they just sit well next to each other. Uh, so that I'm really happy with that so far. Um, I'm also uh, very happy with as we rendered the, uh, the undersuit, the yellow really jumps off at you due to that color contrast and due to like sort of value contrast, right? Like the yellow is just lighter than the cloth. Really nice blend of both value and color contrast so far. And we're getting close to the end of this video. We're gonna move into a second video where we're gonna finish the remaining parts of these models non-metallic metal of the guns and the other various details, faces, hair, uh, a little bit of object source lighting on the eyeballs, on the on the armor, things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it was a really, it was a blast to make. And uh, the second one will be coming out about a week from now. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.